Hi and welcome to this set of tutorials on uh, thermodynamics. This is just going to be uh, about the zero flaw. The f the, well, it's like the first law really, but it's not. It's a zero flaw. It goes backwards one because if we got to add uh, one of the key components to the set of laws, which is uh, about uh, thermal equilibrium. So I'll talk about that. Now thermodynamics is often one of the scariest subjects you can do at uh, degree level chemistry, or even, I don't know whether to touch on it, uh, um, beginner's chemistry now, but uh, and I think the the problem with it is that there's a lack of examples. Now thermodynamics explains most of the processes that we encounter in everyday life, uh, but in my experience, it's 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 not taught very well um, because it, examples just aren't um, abundant, if you will. So hopefully, in this set of tutorials, I'm going to put some good examples in there as to talk about and describe thermodynamics because it is a really good subject right so the zero flow is uh, states that if if a is in thermal equilibrium with b and b is in thermal equilibrium with c then c is in thermal equilibrium with a now a lot of people are probably already confused by that statement because it does sound a bit long-winded so we put in a few examples here we've got a our system there and I've said it's in thermal equilibrium with B. What does that mean? That means it's there's some heat transfer. Okay, so there's heat going from one side to the other. And if A is a uh, higher temperature initially than B, then what's happening? They'll both get to the same temperature. They both equilibrate. Okay, so um, eventually B will be the same temperature as A. And that's through the transfer of energy, which we call heat. Now if A is also in thermal equilibrium with C, like that, that means by default, because A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and it's in thermal equilibrium with C, that means B must be in thermal equilibrium with C. Now these are just numbers, and this is where a lot of um, degree level tutors will stop and say, right, that's, that's the answer, and there you are, you have to understand that. And I think that's great. I understand it, but not a lot of people will understand those concepts. So let's just move this out of the way and let's put it into real day, everyday situation. Just move that down a little bit. This is a good example. So we've got a cup of tea. Now a cup of tea here, um, where we have, I'll just add another layer here. So what happens is this can be A. Our little bit of lemon we've got some Earl Grey tea there the tea itself well that can be B and the cup well that can be C so because the lemon is in um, the water the, the uh, Earl Grey tea if you will and that's at say 50 degrees 50 degrees C then if you leave it long enough the um, the lemon will be at 50 degrees if unless it cools down to the atmosphere but imagine it's it can't cool down it's in a vacuum somewhere and it's not going to evaporate but you know what i mean and eventually the cup will become 50 degrees because the um, earl grey tea is warming the cup up as well so that is a system where you have a b and c a is not in contact with c but it is in thermal equilibrium with C because of B. So they're all in thermal equilibrium with each other because they share this, this, this structure or network, if you will. A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and B is in thermal equilibrium with C. So therefore, A must be in thermal equilibrium with C. Now hopefully that makes sense. I tried explaining it earlier to uh, this young lady and the message just didn't get across. So that's it for now. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.